everyone, and thank you for tuning in for this week's OTV Weekend Report. In our top news, Palau's traditional chiefs have taken the lead in declaring the increasing number of violent crimes in the nation as a national crisis. Through the declaration dated on September 12th, the chiefs are also calling upon all parents, leaders, law enforcement personnel, and the community as a whole to join forces in addressing the cause of the rise in violent crimes in the community. In the past several months, we have seen a number of violent crimes in our community that have resulted in severe injuries and loss of lives, and we have not seen in our history in such a short period of time the number of violent incidents and loss of lives unrelated to war, says the chiefs. The chiefs further stress the many incidents which resulted in loss of lives, including last year's hacking death of a Filipino worker and another incident that resulted in the death of a Japanese citizen. The violent incidents and crimes that occurred within the recent past against many people, national and foreign guests, and most recently the violent and gruesome knife assault that resulted in the taking of the life of a young and promising Palawan son and the permanent maiming of another have affected the very foundation of our society, stressed the chiefs. The declaration urges all sectors to work in unison to address such crisis. The increase in violent incidents and crimes have reached a crisis point that requires concrete and timely action from all sectors of the Palawan society. Suspects of the hacking incident on September 3rd near Hanpa Hardware Store that led to the passing of one of the victims and another hospitalized with serious injuries entered a not guilty plea during their bail and arraignment hearing before Associate Justice Lourdes Materne. Mirasa Adui Andres, who was charged with four counts of aiding and abetting with a dangerous weapon and aiding and abetting assault and battery, is now out on bail after his family posted a surety bond in the amount of $25,000. Mira Albaid Ease Oitarang is still in custody and is being held on a 50000 cash or 100000 surety bond. He was charged with eight counts of second-degree attempted murder and other related crimes. Although Andres is out on bail, he must abide with the terms and conditions of his release ordered by Materne, including an observing a 9 p.m. curfew and also prohibiting, prohibited from contacting any of the victims or witnesses, including 1010 Romangasau. Surviving victim Nolan Rebluth, who sustained several injuries during the attack, was medevaced to the Philippines earlier this week for additional treatment. Guam Congressman Madeline Bordalo urged her House of Representatives colleagues to support the renewal of Palau's Compact of Free Association during her testimony on Monday, September 10th, saying that the Obama administration needs to engage more with the Congress in ensuring that the renewed agreement addresses the requirements of the government of Palau. In her testimony, Bordalo stressed the importance of the Congress and the administration to continue working together to find mutually agreeable offsets to advance the Palau Compact legislation. In addition to highlighting the strength of partnership with Palau and the potential impact to U.S. interests if the Congress does not pass the legislation, I am concerned that the continued delays in the passing of an agreement will affect our country's diplomatic relations and political capital with our allies in the region, says Bordalo. The House subcommittee hearing also heard testimonies from Tony Babauta, Assistant Secretary of the Interior for Insular Areas and other Department of State senior officers. The Palau Compact has remained in Congress unacted on since January 2011. The Belau Tourism Association, in support of the Macaque Eradication Project, is asking the President of the Republic to seek financial assistance from Palau's international partners, especially the government of Germany, and to declare the eradication of macaque monkeys as a national priority. In her letter to President Torribiong, dated September 4th, BTA President Carol Niraidis noted that macaque monkeys have multiplied to plague proportions on Angaur making agriculture impossible and devastating the native forest birds. Further stressing the importance of the eradication project and raising food security concerns in the state, Niraidis said farming for food production is not possible on Angaur and the people have no food security. They subsist almost entirely on imported food. 
The macaque e eradication project is being led by the Bureau of Agriculture and the National Invasive Species Committee coordinated by the Macaque Corps Group. In addition, the group is also working closely with Island Conservation, a U.S.-based international NGO. Recognizing that this invasive species of monkeys is not only a problem for Angar State, Niraidis wrote, if nothing is done, the monkeys will spread throughout the islands of Palau and the entire nation will become completely food dependent. Macaque monkeys were introduced to Angar during the German phosphate mining period in the early 1900s. After sending hundreds of, summons of summonses to possible jurors, the court has finally selected and swore in eight jurors for Palau's first jury trial case in the Republic of Palau versus Amador Mies, a.k.a. Amador Osima. On September 4th, jury selection began with the voir dire, the preliminary exam examination of jurors by the court and counsel. Presentation of witnesses and evidence began on Monday, September 10th, where the trial is anticipated to take five weeks. Defendant Amador Mies is facing charges relating to the hacking incident near the Asahi baseball field in June of last year that resulted in the death of Virginia Gallo. Over 20 witnesses are anticipated to be called during the course of the trial. Due to water pump problems, Palau residents have been under water rationing for a few weeks pending maintenance. Minister Nirai Ngas is pleased to report that water is anticipated to be returned back to its normal service. Mengmerail omega katangga. Esil number one album, directly recently the directly released. Eka mana mechanical problems. Igel di parts matamal. E dia kara belau mung. Gile dalo musra ikhlas belau. Dik ti di luar tira di luar angkai di le David Ngok lima ti di luar komora alasai. Mo dosis kroli le tengah, tunggu kita ikan ada dosis yang ramah problem lagi. Kreli sebab itu mula, mengtabai milu bete, order stal milu bete merongga lagi. No sebab itu mesti ka, a problem lagi di sebab itu di ngati yang degut mukla. Meng sel number two, sel number two nama ungil, sel number one nama ungil. Hendi sel number one nanti ka recently kini install lagi. Meng wal since rai lemu nukla kara eli yang Melmutre lang al Mrail ng arat testuan. Mang agi omda sa agi agi testuan ay gal tablong al Melmutra Monday. Masum mal di smooth ay agi dale hotel di ka koram mo problem ring. Emrong ng ng mga malmut al dulya at emelaral mo ang aram mo di ka mo di ka a war hour. Sa agi dale lang ako ra status report ng mera. A United Nations report prepared by Special Rapporteur Kaylin Georgescu is pushing the United States to provide extra compensation to settle claims by nuclear-affected Marshall Islanders and end a legacy of distrust. The report also urged Washington to declassify secret reports of its nuclear testing program in the country. Georgescu said the report is neither to apportion, blame, nor attempt to make a legal pronouncement on the nuclear testing program. The goal, according to Georgescu, was to stimulate dialogue between the parties in the spirit of understanding, respect, and reconciliation for the benefit of the Marshallese people. The report also included testimony by nuclear test survivors about the psychological trauma from witnessing the explosions and their effects recognizing a serious health concern. The report was presented to the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva. Malakal residents have been experiencing water problems for several weeks as a result of a pipe leakage that the Bureau of Public Works has been unable to find, fix due to lack of necessary equipment. However, Minister Nirai Ngas revealed that the problem will soon be solved. Osobel me lo basel 
es el, 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 el que lo da el subir oval, el, el, el sounding system, el oval o sigue ser el manchón a vibrar con el ala. Seguir el ala, si el gombal ya gimna, no se os ha oído, también la dirección de la central cotización del tilme, ma gimna, arulé, que aquí le recusión mora vais, ya vais a mano, un irem nembre del signer ni approval ni mang nato da PO el gire la payment el morsel gombali belang a gombali adire kan le apne golor tira tutau eto mula set tambre engel engineer el umot mokra a omrole el melo basik kagdan la malmetu mo mangel a obantiri tiri la da dra public work tiang emro goto mo sigir seklo la mars mang once selbe tiri seklo la mars emro goto mo mangar alama a public work el mogi si se el vacío el marisí de la marcha y me recuerdo que de mi salvo sin un arac con el a damage me recuerdo que de mi salvo y me recuerdo que 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 me recuerdo Matson Inc., a Honolulu-based shipping company that services Hawaii, Guam, and the Micronesian region, announced on Friday, September 7th, that they will be raising its fuel surcharge by 4.5 percentage points. The change will reportedly take effect on October 7th, increasing charges to Guam and Micronesia from 35.5% to 40%. Matson officials cited rising bunker fuel and other energy-related costs as the reason for the increase. Since announcing our last decrease in mid-July, bunker fuel prices have risen over 13 percent. Energy-related expenses continue to be a significant cost factor for most businesses, as well as consumers, with transportation companies especially hard hit, says Dave Hopps, Senior Vice President of Ocean Services. A delegation of experts from the Department of the Aquaculture of the National Taiwan Ocean University, consisting of a marine ecologist, environmentalist, aquaculturist, and an expert in ornamental aquarium and aquatic ecology, is visiting the country as part of the bilateral maritime cooperation between the Republic of China-Taiwan and Palau. ROC Ambassador Maggie Tian stressed that, as a steadfast development partner of Palau, the ROC government is committed to the enhancement of food security in the country. The grouper project, currently underway in the Palau National Aquaculture Center, is part of a good beginning toward the goal and more cooperative projects are expected, aiming at benefiting both the people of Palau and the ROC, says Ambassador Tian. Both countries have launched relevant programs in recent years based on the practical need in Palau for marine resource management and sustainability such as the construction of the rabbit fish hatchery, the Bureau of Marine Resources office, and the broodstock hatchery and lab. And now for this week's environmental update, here's Yalop of PCS. El albuy le será un error glorioso, el mora un aim glorioso a conservation officers lang esa state government am la gut mcli a socio economic survey. Tiang el survey a oger oger em la ya clung el cloud en el arab lang esa el gire la masagalat mang lugos conservation areas. Tiang el survey a dire que el oger oger el gire la clung el cloud en el lalo ul mas pe el ablo el mangas alwell. Ang kalbalo la mga sa alwel at mal endangered species rin al time. Ay kang tablong laarm at mal maklo o tutalil ang mga siyukang rikid at other bailaw. Ang isa state government silbolo dung li at klungil at klaw dung ir at other abalu yung mungut makli at uriyor na o sisaak la el mura at other abalu rin isar. Mapalaw Conservation Society, mga isa state government ta uri nga sulira rogu il adra ang isa rin lo sabir lo ngira agir matirik il adra ang isa state government el git maklit di al survey. Ya o nga rungol isid lim na napisi esa awasay. Nga rin nga survey il direk ratara survey rabagay raigal albabar orior il direk ra World Heritage Site. Tiang al survey 
او هي البروجرام المرامه الملام غتموك المانجمنت بلان راي قال الباب الترانكليل او راك ايلاند ساذرن لاغون انكليل تيل سيرفي ا ناشونال بروجرام فور مانيتورينغ فورست اند كوستال بيردز لو جيو اكزيكيوتيف اوردر المنار او بيسرا بريزيدنت ابيلا ناشونال ميوزيوم امان تقليل تيل بروجرام يا بي سي اس ماغور ستيت غفرمنت رينجرز ا اول نسيو يا بغاي اديري غملا مو ان دينجرد سبيسيز من مالونيل تيل سيرفي لو ميسلو اسي مال تيل دي سيل ابغاي لنا السيل تيل وورلد هيريتج سايت ما دا غوت مال مسالو الميسر تيل اوتريتس بروجرام رو اسيس اكلل لو جيل اقلار رابيلاو الما مايكرونيزيا ثانكس يا لب سينامي غفرنر فيسز امبيتشمنت بالاو ان سولجر بروموتد تو ميجر اند مور نيوز افتر ذس شورت بريك ويل بي رايت باك Blood donation is a simple four-step process. Registration, medical history, a mini physical, the donation, and refreshments. A healthy donor may donate red blood cells every 90 days or three months. The number one reason donors say they want to give blood is because they want to help others. There's never been a better time to advertise on OTV. 
our loyal local following throughout Palau and Micronesia has grown to include a worldwide audience with our newly relaunched website OceaniaTV.net with an average of 250,000 hits per week your message will be seen and heard not just in Palau but around the world call now or email to find out more about our 5th year anniversary packages Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. The Commonwealth of the Marianas Islands, CNMI, Governor Benigno Fitial is facing impeachment after a minority bloc in CNMI's House of Representatives filed a resolution containing 16 allegations to impeach him as the country's governor. The resolution accuses the governor of multiple felonies, multiple acts of public corruption and neglecting official duties. Joseph De Leon Guerrero, chairman of the impeachment commitment and lead author of the resolution, told Radio Australia that the resolution lists 16 articles, five of which are acts of corruption, seven acts of neglect of, neglect of office, rather neglect of duty, and four commissions of felonies. We believe that through his actions, he has breached his oath of office, and through his actions, there is apparently no regard for the rule of law or transparency said Guerrero. Fitial, on the other hand, has not addressed the allegations set forth in the resolution, but has released a statement begging for people's patience and forgiveness on the shortcomings of those who do not understand his motivations or actions. The Special Committee on Impeachment has scheduled 12 meetings starting this week that is open to the public. This is the first time in CNMI history that a resolution impeaching the governor has been introduced. Consistent state of environmental reporting is an essential tool for guiding appropriate policy and decision making. This was the general consensus of participants who attended the concluded second Pacific Environment Forum in New Caledonia. This year, the focus of the forum was the development of a me mechanism for national state of environment monitoring and reporting that will synergize with a broader regional framework. Although the whole idea of state of environment reporting can be daunting, it is an incredibly valuable tool, says Tuilo Schuster, a participant from Samoa. The forum concluded with three major outputs, agreement on a framework and approach for developing a regional state of environment assessment, guidance on, developing on development of indicators, and a recommended roadmap for actions. The forum was an opportunity for Pacific stakeholders to discuss environmental issues before the annual Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Program, SPREP, meeting. The three main outputs were presented to the SPREP meeting for further consideration. Deep sea mineral exploration and exploitation is an emerging new economic opportunity for the Pacific. But Dr. Russell Howorth of the Secretariat of the Pacific Community, or SPC, says the opportunity must be balanced against protection of the ocean environment and preservation of rare and fragile ecosystems and ocean habitats. Dr. Howorth spoke to participants at the regional training workshop on geological, biological, and environmental aspects of deep sea minerals last month, saying that the precautionary approach must prevail. Howorth indicated that Deep Sea Minerals, or DSM team, members have already completed 13 national stakeholder consultation workshops across the region, with plans to visit the remaining two. During the Pacific ACP meeting in Cook Islands, SPC launched the Regional Legislative and Regulatory Framework for Deep Sea Mineral Exploration and Exploitation to provide better understanding of deep sea environments and to assist in the efforts to effectively tackle deep sea mineral issues. The workshop was organized by the SPC DSM project and is part of the technical assistance provided to the 15 Pacific ACP countries, which includes Palau, FSM, RMI, Tuvalu, and others. 
On Tuesday, September 11th, the USDA Rural Development State Director, Chris Kanazawa, met with the Palau Chamber of Commerce to discuss many opportunities for business, business development services through the USDA Rural Development Department. Kanazawa highlighted programs and services offered by the USDA that are underutilized by Palau and the region and also showed lending and grant opportunities Palau could take advantage of. Here's an OTV interview with Mr. Kanazawa. I'm Chris Kanazawa. I'm the state director for USDA Rural Development. Uh, and Rural Development has, uh, uh, provides financing uh, with grants and loans for housing projects, for business projects, as well as community facilities. Um, so we have a wide array of, of, of programs. And, uh, you know, I've been here in Palau. We have an office here uh, in Palau. Uh, to provide the services of, of USDA uh, to the community. Um, one of the big news items that we, we announced earlier today uh, was that we entered into uh, uh, an agreement with the uh, National Development Bank of Palau uh, for a, in the, what we call an intermediary relending program uh, where we will be making a loan to the development bank for $750,000 and the development bank will be contributing an additional $750,000. So there will be a fund of $1.5 million that will be available uh, for loans into the community for financing of business and economic development. So I think this is really a, an excellent opportunity for, for the community of Palau. Um, I had met with uh, President um, Torbiong earlier this morning and you know I, I told him that I was very encouraged about uh, the state of Palau at this point because of the fact that they have a growing tourism business uh, and with that growth there will be also uh, expansion of other ancillary businesses and services that will be provided that will support the economy as well as provide new jobs. Uh, you also have now a new leadership with the Development Bank of Palau and I think that, that our partnership with the Development Bank will also provide another source of outreach of USDA rural development programs into the community of Palau. Uh, I believe that President uh, uh, Torrebiang has also been very supportive of business, very supportive of renewable energy, uh, which I think is very positive for the community. And then you have Ambassador Reed Rowe, who also has been extremely supportive and encouraging of, of uh, the activities of the U.S. government in, in Palau. And so I, I think, I, think uh, I'm, I leave Palau uh, earlier tomorrow morning uh, very encouraged about the future of Palau. Um, they have uh, uh, very much um, uh, developed their, their, their core business segment. Uh, I think there is still uh, uh, much respect and sensitivity to the culture uh, as well as respect to the environment. So, um, I, as I said, I'm, I'm extremely happy that rural development can provide support uh, for this community, and we continue to make that commitment uh, into the future. The Pacific Media is, an, is mourning the sudden passing of a pioneering publisher and owner of Solomon Island's leading daily newspaper, Father John William Lamani. The Media Association of the Solomon Islands, or Massey, President George Hermning, released a statement saying that the death of the late Father Lamani is a huge loss for the media industry in the Solomon Islands. He described the late Father Lamani as one of the pioneering figures in the development of the independent media in the Solomon Islands. He, is also, he was also a pioneering Pacific Island newspaper publisher, owning Solomon Islands daily newspaper, The Solomon Star, PAOA FM radio, and a printing business. In 2001, Lamani and his wife were awarded with the PINA Media Freedom Award for the bravery and national leadership of the local Solomon Islands media during the ethnic tension. In 2009, he was knighted and bestowed the Order of St. Michael and St. George for his service in media, church, and community in his country. The late Father John Lamani is survived by his wife Catherine, his children, and grandchildren. 
The second Yap State Economic and Social Summit kicked off this week in what Yap Governor Sebastian Anafal says is aimed to be tackling public sector, private sector, and community challenges. Anafal emphasized in his opening remarks that together as a community, challenges can be addressed. All of us together will critically contribute inputs, reflections, and ideas to tackle the challenges that our state is facing and to find a direction to channel our joint effort and commitment for a common goal, the well-being of the state of Yap, says Governor Anafal. He also said through the summit, the committees on the public sector, private sector, and community sector, as well as the joint cross-cutting committee, will meet to try and answer the concerns that people may have identified as the most meaningful questions for YAP's future. The summit concluded on Friday, September 14th with the endorsement of its outcomes. A memorandum of understanding has been signed between Pompey's Utilities Corporation and the Energy Infrastructure Global, EIG, a renewable energy firm, for the renovation of the island's power grid with the implementation of renewable energy. EIG Managing Director Jeffrey Voacolo commended Governor John Esha's leadership, saying that he is truly committed to showing the world how an island nation can lower their dependence on fossil fuels. The design concept for the renovation consists of the replacement of the entire existing diesel generating plant by installing 4 megawatt of temporary generation, 7.5 megawatt of newly highly efficient diesel generating power plant, the implementation of 3 megawatt of solar photovoltaic, 2 megawatts of battery storage, and 750 kilowatts of hydropower. In addition, a training center will be established within EIG's Micronesian office in Pompeii to provide the necessary installation skills needed for the project. 36-year-old Henson Del Tang, a Palauan son who has served in the U.S. military for more than a decade, was currently promoted from his current ranking of captain to major with help from his wife, Sherry, and Lieutenant Colonel Cornell Anderton. In the course of his military career, Major Del Tong has been deployed to Iraq as the Senior Division Operations Advisor to an Iraqi Army Division, has also been recently deployed to Japan in support of the Great East Japan Earthquake Humanitarian Assistance and the Disaster Relief Mission in support of Operation Tomodachi. The next rank up is Lieutenant Colonel, which was attained by Senator Komsek Chin prior to his retirement from the military. And now, let's go to micro sports. Well, with the Paralympics ending last week, you would think that would do it for Olympian-type facilities, but not so in Palau. The Palau National Olympic Committee hosted a very nice welcoming reception for our team Palau athletes. This was among our first opportunity to catch up with our Olympians and hear some of their stories. A distinguished group of guests were on hand, including Vice President Karai Marior and the High Chief Reclai. A corner track and field Olympian, Rodman Tel Tool, and had to ask him a question I've been dying to know. Um, you see any famous Olympians? Ah, uh, mystery. Who? Ah, uh, Tel, not a basket. <laughs> you see Kobe Bryant? Ah. Uh, you meet him? Mm, yeah. yeah. What about Michael Phelps? Yeah, the am like Really? So uh, you walk out, you're wearing the costume, and there's like just hundreds of thousands of people streaming. What were you thinking about? Uh, this is my first time going to the Olympics as a coach, uh, but uh, going inside the stadium for the opening ceremony is just as the same as being an athlete. It's just the fact that representing Palau is more than it's an experience that uh, if you're a coach and athlete, you, you still want to feel it, and it's too overwhelming. The Team Palau basketball team was also on hand before heading off island to a big tournament. All right, I'm standing here with the one, the only Team Palau who's getting ready to head off island for a big tournament coming up. So we're going to talk to Team Captain Mikey and uh, see what's going on in Guam. Yeah, so hello, Palau. Uh, we are the basketball team uh, for uh, the Micronesian basketball tournament this coming uh, September 22 the 23rd to the 30th, which be will be held in Guam, and uh, 
we just uh, want to thank uh, all our uh, sponsors and uh, all the supporters in Palau and uh, we would like to um, announce uh, there will be a fundraising on the 20th of September it will be a barbecue held at uh, the Short Island and um, near uh, uh, SLC and uh, we would like to invite the whole public to come and uh, support our basketball team uh, for our trip this coming month. So you guys are going to do all the cooking or what? Uh, basically, yes. We have a couple of uh, good top chefs, chefs, top chefs on our... Uh, who's, uh, who's the one that can hold it down the best on uh, the uh, barbecue? Uh, Kent. Kent Moore. <laughs> that guy right He's the, he's the, we call him the uncle of the team. He's the oldest on our team. So yeah. Also, we have a, we'll be having a, one of our last uh, scrimmage exhibition game uh, on Wednesday. We held at the gym at 6 o'clock. So we would invite the public to come and uh, see how our uh, team will stands. Uh, so with the tournament going, who's all going to be there? Uh, uh, we, to our knowledge, we uh, heard that Guam has, uh, being the host team, it has uh, three teams, and uh, there will be uh, the Saipan, uh, Republic of Marshall Islands, uh, and the uh, Federated States of uh, Micronesia. Any predictions for the tournament? <laughs> First place, champion. Go Palau! Woo! It's a short and sweet microsports this week. Thanks for watching, and have a safe weekend. Thanks, Mike, and good luck to Team Palau. A famous Philippines alternative rock band, Alamib, is visiting Palau this week, performing their hit singles in several gigs around town. Our very own Mike Fox caught up with the band for more details. Ali Ali, it's Mike Fox here with a special report coming to you from Sea Passion Live. And believe it or not, I am here with the band, Alamib. Yes. Hey, all right. Come all the way from uh, Manila to be here to rock it out for you. So uh, why don't we uh, just have you guys introduce yourself and tell you tell us your instrument of choice. Hey guys, my name is Carl McFly. I'm on vocals. My name is Dex on guitars. My name is Gene on keyboard. Um, Jackson drums. June on bass. Right on. I, it was hard to believe. We don't get many acts like this in Palau, but uh, we're very proud to have these guys out here with us. So uh, for those that might not be familiar, and believe me, we do have a big Filipino community out here who are familiar with their hits like Your Love. What about for our other uh, uh, you know, fans out there? What can they expect from your shows over the next three days? Oh, we'll be doing a lot of uh, songs that will be... Uh I don't know, it's going to be ranging from reggae to rock, anything in between, and we just want everybody to come out with us and have fun. That's all. We're going to have a really good time next three days. Nice. And this is another first for Palau as well. They are releasing uh, an EP that's never been put out as of yet, right? Yep. And first coming out, making its debut in Palau, and on it, in honor of their Palauan appearance, they actually have uh, a nice little Palauan track in here, a little reggae-style flip, Nelatil, and uh, as sung by our drummer here, so tell us a little bit about that experience, because I know you don't speak Palauan, right? <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, very hard to do that song, but I really try so hard to do that in honor of the, the people of Palau, so there you go, yeah. Vocal duties were supposedly done by me, but he did it better. <laughs> so, uh, the, you know, the last part of the song there is the, the whole uh, uh, description of the first two stanzas and the chorus, wherein it's already a mix of the Palawan language as well as the English. So everybody's going to have a good time with that one. Yes, and I have to say, I took a listen to the track. The Palawan is not bad at all, man. At least it's better than mine. So uh, <laughs> mad props to you on that. But uh, we got uh, four shows total tonight, tomorrow, and Sunday afternoon um, right here at Sea Passion. And then another show Sunday evening. Um, it should be pretty live and happening, man. I mean, these guys have been great. Uh, cliffside. At, by the pool, and uh, they got a nice little mixture of reggae, rock, and uh, come check it out. I think you'll have a great time. Anything you guys want to add to uh, all our Palauan uh, viewers out there? 
Again, we want to thank uh, the, the wonderful people of Palau for inviting us over here. We want to thank, of course, Quincy and everybody behind this whole production. Eric. And, uh, yeah, Eric and everybody, uh, thank you so much. And, of course, you, Mike, and your, your, your stations and all that. Thank you, guys. Uh, we just want to see you guys uh, in, within the uh, three, four nights that we'll be here. Uh, if you want a more intimate evening on Sunday, we're going to have an acoustic by the poolside. So I think you guys are going to like that particular barbecue. But here, we're going to rock our heads off. We are going to party. So come on, people. Please do join us. Alamid is going to rock your worlds. Right on. You guys heard it here first. So uh, come on out. Check us out. And, uh, you know, we want to support these kinds of shows so we can see more of this kind of thing in the future. So I'm Mike, and we're out from this special report. Thanks, Mike. And thank you all for tuning in this week. Have a safe weekend. I'm Blair Phillips. See you all next week for more news.